Assassin's Creed 3 is the worst game I've played ever. Just that's it. That's the review. Kidding, kidding, I am kidding. You do not need to troll me. You don't need to unsubscribe. You don't need to insult me in the comments. Relax, I was kidding. Assassin's Creed 3, is all seriousness, is legitimately a very, very good game. The best in the series personally, I'll tell you later. But on to the review and no more trolling, I promise. So first up, graphics. Uh, probably amazing. Uh, the best I've seen in the Assassin's Creed series yet. And what I noticed is in particular is the facial animations. Much more well done uh, compared to like uh, Brotherhood and Revelations where like the, the, the characters' faces just seem kind of like doughy, I guess. And they were just so, you know, erratic with their, uh, you know, speaking with their lips and stuff. I thought that was just kind of weird. But Assassin's Creed 3... Completely lifelike, completely uh, immerses you into the experience and the lip animations this time and the whole facial animations where you can see lines up here because this mouth is frowning or something. You can see that and I thought that was actually pretty cool. Voice acting great, story interesting, just once again it really immerses you into this whole situation and just like you know the voice actor for Ezio was just amazing, the voice actor for Connor was more or less equally amazing. Despite some of the side missions you come across, he comes off as kind of bland sometimes, but that's forgivable compared to what he does for the rest of the series. So, Gameplay wise, it is actually pretty cool. Um, there's truly, truly nothing new, nothing innovative. You can still pick up weapons that aren't yours. You can use them. You have a tomahawk now instead of a small knife. And you can still change your weapons around if you buy them at a store. The only things new that keeps it refreshing is the different kill animations. So it's not just the same thing every time now. It's actually pretty cool with the different weapon you have where you're looking the enemy at the, you know, where you're looking at them at the time. Honestly, it just depends on sometimes if people are attacking you, honestly, that will affect the kill animation. And what I liked most about this was if two people are attacking you at the same time and you counter it, you do this cool new move where you kill both the people instead of just one and you do it in so many different fashions, whether you have one soldier kill another soldier or you kill them both by yourself or you just ram them with like a bayonet and I thought that was actually pretty cool. Side missions. Uh, this game really, really did a great job with side missions, not just in the fun factor, not just in the, you know, offering diversity factor. It actually really did well into the the whole spirit of the game so it made sense. First off, the homestead missions, which is pretty much missions you do to, um, you know, increase your livelihood of your community and your little dense patch of forest. This really does show an emotional side of Connor. Instead of, like, in the story, he may be like, you know, kill them all, barbaric, all that kind of stuff. It really shows another side of him. Really nice, really uh, well-written up character, how he helps everybody out. And it's just a really nice, uh, you know, set of pace from the action-packed, drama-filled story. The naval missions where you take control of a ship and you uh, pretty much just fight other ships, it actually worked out. I thought it would be just this kind of lame mini-game where you just went on this for trophies or just to take a little break from the story. But it actually is full-fledged missions that you can do and may take up four or five hours of your time. It actually works. It's actually pretty fun. Trees, I'm sure a lot of people had doubts about this, but trees actually are scalable. They're actually fitting, like the multiplayer of Assassin's Creed, they're actually fitting into the Assassin's Creed game. You can, it's perfect. You can jump on maybe uh, a split between trees, you can jump on their branches, you can swing from them, you can climb from them. It actually worked out so it's not what people were thinking. Ah, oh, trees? How are you going to climb on trees like we're used to in the uh, you know Assassin's Creed genre? It works. Technical issues are abund abundant in this game, so it's not a perfect game by far. You got frame rate issues, you got a uh, camera fighting you, you got can't climb correctly, you get stuck on things sometimes. Even when you're not, you know, physically stuck, you won't move, you can't jump to another place where you need to go. And in my case, that affected a mission I did, so I had to do it again, and needless to say, I was kind of pissed, because I'm like, I'm doing this right, can't wait to get on, and ugh. Lastly, on the negative side, and just to be clear, most of the negatives in this game are on the technical side. It, almost everything else is pretty, you know, spot on, pretty good. But 
there are no huge, huge buildings you can climb. I mean, you can climb tall trees, but it's pretty much the same thing over and over again with the same, you know, climbing sequence of a tree. And to be honest, they're not that high. And the only other high buildings would probably be maybe just one or two steeples, like church steeples and stuff. But again, that's not like what we're used to in, uh, you know, Assassin's Creed 1, especially Assassin's Creed 2. It's just not as tall as you thought. So it's not that it takes away from the game. It's just it kind of, you know, disappoints you a little bit. Lastly, lastly about this game, the ending, don't worry, I won't spoil anything, kind of pissed off some people, but I don't understand why. I mean, it's not like the Mass Effect 3 endings where they made no sense. This ending, it makes sense. It's just maybe not the way things people wanted to go. But the, what I really cared most about was I wish at the end you had a choice because there was clearly two different present options available and you'll understand when, when and if you get to the end of yourself. So if you're looking for a great action adventure game, you love the Assassin's Creed series, buy this without a doubt, don't even wait, just go out and buy it. However, if you're one of those people who really can't look past technical issues or you're one of those people I'm hearing a lot about now and you're getting tired of the Assassin's Creed series because it's getting stale, I'd at least say rent it, give it a chance, it is pretty damn good, try and get past the technical issues. Hey guys, some last minute things real quick. There is my personal opinion on what game so far is the best Assassin's Creed games. And as I mentioned, Assassin's Creed 3 isn't the best in my opinion. You guys can have your opinion. Absolutely, this is my opinion. This is no way fact. But honestly, for me, Assassin's Creed 2 is still the best. Again, personal opinion. Just thought you'd let you guys know since I imagine quite a few of you would ask. Second thing. I did not touch upon the multiplayer in this uh, review because I played only one match before I got disconnected and like, you know, eh, whatever. And before some of you go, oh, well, you must have sucked. Actually, no, I didn't. My very first match, I went uh, six deaths, three kills, finished fourth place. I actually did pretty well. But it just, it's, it felt so simplified and the same thing as the past multiplayer games to me that I just felt I couldn't really take anything productive from the multiplayer, whether negative or positive, and put it into the review. So I'm like, why bother? Let the multiplayer component speak for itself if people choose to do it. But the single player of Assassin's Creed 3 is really all I enjoyed. So that's why I thought I'd only touch upon that in this review. So thanks everyone for watching.